current is the amount of charge per time that passes a certain point in a wire. It's measured in coulombs per second, which we call an ampere. You often have to rearrange this formula to solve for the amount of charge that passes in a certain amount of time. Remember that batteries pump current out of the positive terminal and it flows into the negative terminal. You can find the resistance of a cylindrical resistor using the formula rho L over A. Rho is the resistivity of the material, A is the cross-sectional area, and L is the length of the resistor. When you use Ohm's law, R is the resistance of the resistor, I is the current that flows through that particular resistor, and V is the voltage drop across that particular resistor. Careful, V here is not necessarily the voltage of the battery. When current runs through a resistor, it gives off heat. The amount of heat it gives off per time is the power of the resistor. To find the power used by a resistor, multiply the current through that resistor by the voltage drop across that resistor. P equals IV also works for a battery, but this time it tells you the total power the battery supplies to the circuit. Plugging Ohm's law into P equals IV, you can also get the form I squared R or V squared over R for the power used by a resistor. Power, as always, is measured in watts, and you can find the energy used by the resistor by multiplying the power times the time. Capacitors are devices that store charge and store energy. The definition of capacitance is the charge per voltage. In other words, the charge on one of the plates divided by the voltage across that capacitor. C equals Q over V is the definition of capacitance, and so it works for any capacitor of any shape. If you happen to have a parallel plate capacitor, you can find the capacitance using epsilon A over D. Epsilon naught is a constant. It has a value of 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th in units that you don't really care about. A is the surface area of one of the plates, and D is the distance the plates are separated by. If you fill the capacitor with the dielectric, it will always increase the capacitance by a factor of K, the dielectric constant. This K is different from the 9 times 10 to the 9th K. The energy stored inside of a capacitor is given by 1 half Q times V. Q is the charge on the capacitor, and V is the voltage drop across the capacitor. You can also find the energy by using 1 half C V squared. You know the V is squared because you can see the V squared. You can find the total resistance for resistors in series just by adding them up. Resistors in series must have the same current. For resistors in parallel, you have to do 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. The total resistance for resistors in parallel will always be smaller than either of the two resistors. In other words, adding a resistor in parallel decreases the total resistance. Resistors in parallel have to have the same voltage because anything in parallel has to have the same voltage. If you have two resistors in parallel and a total amount of current flows into the junction, if the resistors have different values, each resistor will get a different amount of current. The total amount of current that flows into the junction has to equal the current through R1 plus the current through R2. The current through R1 is going to equal the total current times the ratio of R2 over R1 plus R2. Similarly, the current through R2 is going to equal the total current times the ratio of R1 over R1 plus R2. If R1 equals 3 ohms and R2 equals 12 ohms, R1 is going to get 4 fifths of the total current, and R2 is going to get 1 fifth of the total current. That's because one resistor was 4 times bigger than the other resistor, so you break the current into fifths. If one resistor is n times bigger than the other resistor, you break the current into n plus oneths. The rules for finding the total capacitance is reversed compared to the rules for finding the total resistance. Capacitors in series always have the same charge, and capacitors in parallel always have the same voltage because everything in parallel has the same voltage. If you have two different capacitors at the same voltage, you can find the charge on each capacitor by multiplying the capacitance by V. If you have a circuit with resistors and capacitors, the capacitor makes it so no current flows through that leg of the circuit. You could find the charge on the capacitor by using the formula C times V, but V here is not the voltage of the battery, it's the voltage across the capacitor. To find the voltage drop across the capacitor, just find the voltage drop across the resistor that's in parallel with it using V equals IR. Plugging in that voltage into the formula Q equals C times V will give you the charge on the capacitor. If there was an additional resistor in the capacitor leg of the circuit, it wouldn't matter since there's no current flowing through that leg, there's no voltage drop across that resistor, and it's as if it's not even there. Kirchhoff's junction rule says that the total current flowing into a junction has to equal the total current flowing out of a junction. Kirchhoff's loop rule says that if you add up all the voltage drops across a closed loop in a circuit, it has to add up to zero. If your loop goes through a resistor in the same direction the current is flowing, you get a contribution of negative IR. 
If your loop goes in the opposite direction the current is flowing, you get a contribution of positive IR. If your loop goes through a battery from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, you get a contribution of positive the voltage of the battery. Not the voltage of the battery times R or anything like that, just the voltage of the battery. And if your loop goes through a battery from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, you get a contribution of negative the voltage of the battery. The terminal voltage is the voltage between the positive and negative terminals of a battery. We model actual batteries as if there was a perfect battery of an EMF inside with an internal resistor. To find the terminal voltage, take the EMF of the battery and subtract I times the internal resistance. If I flows through the battery the wrong way, you'll get a terminal resistance that's epsilon plus IR. Voltmeters measure the voltage across two points and they should be hooked up in parallel with the circuit element that they're measuring. An ideal voltmeter would have an infinite resistance. Ammeters measure the current through a leg of a circuit and they need to be hooked up in series. An ideal ammeter would have zero resistance. 